A retroflector is a device or surface that reflects light back to its source with a minimum of scattering. In a retroflector an electromagnetic wave front is reflected back along a vector that is parallel to but opposite in direction from the wave source. The angle of incidence at which the device or surface reflects light in this way is greater than zero, unlike a planar mirror, which does this only if the mirror is exactly perpendicular to the wave front, having a zero angle of incidence. Types There are several ways to obtain retroflection. Equals corner reflector equals A set of three mutually perpendicular reflective surfaces, placed to form the corner of a cube, work as a retroflector. The three corresponding normal vectors of the corner sides form a basis in which to represent the direction of an arbitrary incoming ray, A, B, C. When the ray reflects from the first side, say X, the ray's X component, A, is reversed to a while the Y and Z components are unchanged. Therefore as the ray reflects first from side X then side Y and finally from side Z the ray direction goes from, A, B, C, to, A, B. C, 2, a, B, C, 2, a, B, C, and it leaves the corner with all three components of motions exactly reversed. Corner reflectors occur in two varieties. In the more common form, the corner is literally the truncated corner of a cube of transparent material such as conventional optical glass. In this structure, the reflection is achieved either by total internal reflection or silvering of the outer cube surfaces. The second form uses mutually perpendicular flat mirrors bracketing an airspace. These two types of similar optical properties. A large relatively thin retroflector can be formed by combining many small corner reflectors, using the standard triangular tiling. Equals cat's eye equals. Another common type of retroflector consists of refracting optical elements with a reflective surface arranged so that the focal surface of the refractive element coincides with the reflective surface, typically a transparent sphere and a spherical mirror. In the paraxial approximation, this effect can be achieved with lowest divergence with a single transparent sphere when the refractive index of the material is exactly 1 plus the refractive index Ni of the medium from which the radiation is incident. In that case, the sphere surface behaves as a concave spherical mirror with the required curvature for retroflection. In practice, the optimal index of refraction may be lower than Ni plus 1 or per mil 2 due to several factors. For one, it is sometimes preferable to have an imperfect, slightly divergent retroflection, as in the case of road signs, where the illumination and observation angles are different. Due to spherical aberration, there also exists a radius from the center line at which incident rays are focused at the center of the rear surface of the sphere. Finally, high index materials have higher Fresnel reflection coefficients, so the efficiency of coupling of the light from the ambient into the sphere decreases as the index becomes higher. Commercial retroflective beads thus vary an in index from around 1.5 up to around 1.9. The spherical aberration problem with a spherical cat's eye can be solved in various ways, one being a spherically symmetrical index gradient within the sphere, such as in the Lumberg lens design. Practically, this can be approximated by a concentric sphere system. Because the backside reflection for an uncoated sphere is imperfect, it is fairly common to add a metallic coating to the back half of retroflective spheres to increase the reflectance but this implies that the retroflection only works when the sphere is oriented in a particular direction. An alternative form of the cat's eye retroflector uses a normal lens focused onto a curved mirror rather than a transparent sphere, though this type is much more limited in the range of incident angles over which it retroflects. The term cat's eye derives from the resemblance of the cat's eye retroflector to the optical system that produces the well-known phenomenon of glowing eyes, or iroshine in cats and other vertebrates. The combination of the eye's lens and the cornea form the refractive converging system, while the tapetum lucidum behind the retina forms the spherical concave mirror. Because the function of the eye is to form an image on the retina, an eye focused on a distant object has a focal surface that approximately follows the reflective tapetum lucidum structure, which is the condition required to form a good retroflection. This type of retroflector can consist of many small versions of these structures incorporated in a thin sheet or in paint. 
In the case of paint containing glass beads, the paint glues the beads to the surface where retroflexion is required and the beads protrude, their diameter being about twice the thickness of the paint. Equals face conjugate mirror equals, a third, much less common way of producing a retroflector is to use the nonlinear optical phenomenon of phase conjugation. This technique is used in advanced optical systems such as high power lasers and optical transmission lines. Phase conjugate mirrors require a comparatively expensive and complex apparatus, as well as large quantities of power. However, phase conjugate mirrors have an inherently much greater accuracy in the direction of the retroflexion which in passive elements is limited by the mechanical accuracy of the construction. Operation Retroflectors are devices that operate by returning light back to the light source along the same light direction. The coefficient of luminous intensity, Ri, is the measure of a reflector performance, which is defined as the ratio of the strength of the reflected light to the amount of light that falls on the reflector. A reflector will appear brighter as its Ri value increases. The Ri value of the reflector is a function of the color, size, and condition of the reflector. Clear or white reflectors are the most efficient, and appear brighter than other colors. The surface area of the reflector is proportional to the Ri value which increases as the reflective surface increases. The Ri value is also a function of the spatial geometry between the observer, light source, and reflector. Figures 1 and 2 show the observation angle and entrance angle between the automobile's headlights, bicycle, and driver. The observation angle is the angle formed by the light beam and the driver's line of sight. Observation angle is a function of the distance between the headlights and the driver's eye, and the distance to the reflector. Traffic engineers use an observation angle of 0.2 degrees to simulate a reflector target about 800 feet in front of a passenger automobile. As the observation angle increases, the reflector performance decreases. For example, a truck has a large separation between the headlight and the driver's eye compared to a passenger vehicle. A bicycle reflector appears brighter to the passenger car driver than to the truck driver at the same distance from the vehicle to the reflector. The light beam and the normal axis of the reflector are shown in figure 2 form the entrance angle. The entrance the angle is a function of the orientation of the reflector to the light source. For example, the entrance angle between an automobile approaching a bicycle at an intersection 90 degrees apart is larger than the entrance the angle for a bicycle directly in front of an automobile on a straight road. The reflector appears brightest to the observer when it is directly in line with the light source. The brightness of a reflector is also a function of the distance between the light source and the reflector. At a given observation angle, as the distance between the light source and the reflector decreases, the light that falls on the reflector increases. This increases the amount of light returned to the observer and the reflector appears brighter. Applications Equals on roads equals Retroflection is used on road surfaces, road signs, vehicles, and clothing. When the headlights of a car illuminate a retroflective surface, the reflected light is directed towards the car and its driver. However, a pedestrian can see retroflective surfaces in the dark only if there is a light source directly between them and the reflector or directly behind them. Cat's eyes are a particular type of retroflector embedded in the road surface and are used mostly in the UK and parts of the United States. Corner reflectors are better at sending the light back to the source over long distances while spheres are better at sending the light to a receiver somewhat off axis from the source, as when the light from headlights is reflected into the driver's eyes. Retroflectors can be embedded in the road, or they can be raised above the road surface. Raised reflectors are visible for very long distances, while sunken reflectors are visible only at very close ranges due to the higher angle required to properly reflect the light. Raised reflectors are generally not used in areas that regularly experience snow during winter, as passing snow plows can tear them off the roadways. Stress on roadways caused by cars running over embedded objects also contributes to accelerated wear and pothole formation. Retroflective road paint is thus very popular in Canada and parts of the United States, as it is not affected by the passage of snow plows and does not affect the interior of the roadway. Where weather permits, 
embedded or raised retroflectors are preferred as they last much longer than road paint, which is weathered by the elements, can be obscured by sediment or rain, and is ground away by the passage of vehicles. Equals for road signs equals, reflectivity is light reflected from a source to a surface and returned to its original source. For traffic signs and vehicle operators, the light source is a vehicle a Euro unregistered trademark S headlights, where the light is sent to the traffic sign face and then returned to the vehicle operator. Traffic signs are manufactured with retroflective sheeting so that the traffic sign is visible at night. Reflective sign faces are manufactured with glass beads or prismatic reflectors embedded in the sheeting so that the face reflects light, therefore making the sign appear more bright and visible to the vehicle operator. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the Traffic Safety Facts 2000 publication states the fatal crash rate is three to four times more likely during nighttime crashes than daytime incidents. A misconception many people have is that retroflectivity is only important during nighttime travel. However, in recent years, more states and agencies are requiring headlights to be used during inclement weather, such as rain and snow. According to the Federal Highway Administration, approximately 24% of all vehicle accidents occurred during adverse weather. Rain conditions account for 47% of weather-related accidents. These statistics are based on 14-year averages from 1995 to 2008. The Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices requires signs to be either illuminated or made with retroflective sheeting materials and although most signs in the U.S. are made with retroflective sheeting materials, they degrade over time resulting in a shorter lifespan. Until now, there has been little information available to determine how long the retroflectivity lasts. The MUTCD now requires that agencies maintain traffic signs to a set of minimum levels but provide a variety of maintenance methods that agencies can use for compliance. The minimum retroflectivity requirements do not imply that an agency must measure every sign. Rather, the new MUTCD language describes methods that agencies can use to maintain traffic sign retroflectivity at or above the minimum levels. Equals on the moon equals. Astronauts on the Apollo 11, 14, and 15 missions left retroflectors on the Moon as part of the lunar laser ranging experiment. The Soviet Lunokhod 1 and Lunokhod 2 rovers also carried smaller arrays. Reflected signals were initially received from Lunokhod 1, but no return signals were detected from 1971 until 2010, at least in part due to some uncertainty in its location on the Moon. In 2010, it was found in lunar reconnaissance orbiter photographs and the retroflectors have been used again. Lunokhod 2's array continues to return signals to Earth. Even under good viewing conditions, only a single reflected photon is received every few seconds. This makes the job of filtering laser-generated photons from naturally occurring photons challenging. Equals in Earth orbit equals. LAGEOS and Starshine, LAGEOS or laser geodynamic satellites, are a series of scientific research satellites designed to provide an orbiting laser ranging benchmark for geodynamical studies of the Earth. There are two LAGEOS spacecraft, LAGEOS-1, and LAGEOS-2. They use cube corner retroflectors made of fused silica glass. As of 2004, both LAGEOS spacecraft are still in service. Three Starshine satellites equipped with retroflectors were launched beginning in 1999. The Lares satellite was launched on February 13, 2012. BLITS The BLITS spherical retroflector satellite was placed into orbit as part of a September 2009 Soyuz launch by the Federal Space Agency of Russia with the assistance of the International Laser Ranging Service an independent body originally organized by the International Association of Geodesy, the International Astronomical Union, and international committees. The ILRS Central Bureau was located at the United States Goddard Space Flight Center. The reflector, a type of Lundberg lens, was developed and manufactured by the Institute for Precision Instrument Engineering in Moscow. The purpose of the mission was to validate the spherical glass retroflector satellite concept and obtain SLR data for solution of scientific problems in geophysics, geodynamics, and relativity. 
the BLITS allows millimeter and submillimeter accuracy SLR measurements, as its target error is less than 0.1 mm. An additional advantage is that the Earth a Euro unregistered trademark S magnetic field does not affect the satellite orbit and spin parameters, unlike retroflectors incorporated into active satellites. The BLITS allows the most accurate measurements of any SLR satellites, with the same accuracy level as a ground target. The actual satellite is a solid sphere around 17 cm in diameter, weighing 7.63 kg. It is made with two hemispherical shells of low refractive index glass, and an inner sphere or ball lens made of a high refractive index glass. The hemispheres are glued over the ball lens with all spherical surfaces concentric. The external surface of one hemisphere is coated with aluminum and protected by a varnished layer. It was designed for ranging with a green laser. When used for ranging, the phase center is 85.16 mm behind the sphere center with a range correction of plus 196.94 mm taking into account the indices of refraction. A smaller spherical retroflector of the same type but 6 cm in diameter was fastened to the Meteor 3M spacecraft and tested during its space flight of 2001 Euro 2006. Before a collision with space debris, the satellite was in a sun-synchronous circular orbit, 832 km high, with an inclination of 98.77 degrees, an orbital period of 101.3 minutes, and its own spin period of 5.6 seconds. In early 2013, the satellite was found to have a new orbit 120 m lower, a faster spin period of 2.1 seconds, and a different spin axis. The change was traced back to an event that occurred January 22, 2013 at 757 UTC. Data from the United States a Euro unregistered trademark S space surveillance network showed that within 10 seconds of that time BLITS was close to the predicted path of a fragment of the former Chinese Feng Yun 1C satellite, with a relative velocity of 9.6 km per second between them. The Chinese government destroyed the Feng Yun 1C, at an altitude of 865 km. On January 11, 2007 as a test of an anti-satellite missile which resulted in 2,300 to 15,000 debris pieces. Equals communications equals, modulated retroflectors, in which the reflectance is changed over time by some means, are the subject of research and development for free space optical communications networks. The basic concept of such systems is that a low-power remote system, such as a sensor moat, can receive an optical signal from a base station and reflect the modulated signal back to the base station. Since the base station supplies the optical power, this allows the remote system to communicate without excessive power consumption. Modulated retroflectors also exist in the form of modulated phase conjugate mirrors. In the latter case, a time-reversed wave is generated by the PCM with temporal encoding of the phase conjugate wave. Inexpensive corner aiming retroflectors are used in user controlled technology as optical data link devices. Aiming is done at night, and the necessary retroflector area depends on aiming distance and ambient lighting from street lamps. The optical receiver itself behaves as a weak retroflector because it contains a large, precisely focused lens that detects illuminated objects in its focal plane. This allows aiming without a retroflector for short ranges equals and fish equals, a single biological instance of this is known, in flashlight fish of the family Anomalopidae. equals ships, boats, emergency gear equals, retroflective tape is recognized and recommended by the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea because of its high reflectivity of both light and radar signals. Application to life rafts, personal flotation devices, and other safety gear makes it easy to locate people and objects in the water at night. When applied to both surfaces it creates a much larger radar signature, particularly for fiberglass boats which produce very little radar reflection on their own. It conforms to International Maritime Organization Regulation, IMO Res. A658 and meets U.S. Coast Guard Specification 46 CF a Part 164, Subpart 164.0180
Examples of commercially available products are 3M part numbers 3150A and 6750I. Equals other uses equals, retroflectors are used in the following example applications, in surveying with a total station or robot, the instrument man or robot aims a laser beam at a corner cube retroflector held by the rodman. The instrument measures the propagation time of the light and converts it to a distance. In Canada, aerodrome lighting can be replaced by appropriately colored retroflectors, the most important of which are the white retroflectors that delineate the runway edges, and must be seen by aircraft equipped with landing lights up to two nautical miles away. In common digital cameras, the sensor system is often retroflective. Researchers have used this property to demonstrate a system to prevent unauthorized photographs by detecting digital cameras and beaming a highly focused beam of light into the lens. In movie screens to allow for high brilliance under dark conditions. Digital compositing programs and chroma key environments use retroflection to replace traditional lit backdrops in composite work as they provide a more solid color without requiring the backdrop to be lit separately. In long path DOAS systems retroflectors are used to reflect the light emitted from a light source back into a telescope. It is then spectrally analyzed to obtain information about the trace gas content of the air between the telescope and the retro reflector. Barcode labels can be printed on retroflective material to increase the range of scanning up to 50 feet. See also, safety reflector, retroflective sheeting and tape, high visibility clothing, corner reflector, free space optical communication, GPS block 3 satellite improvements, helogenine, modulating retro reflector, reflective prisms. Notes. References. Optics Letters, Volume 4. Pages 190 Euro 192, Retroflective Arrays as Approximate Phase Conjugators, by H. H. Barrett and S. F. Jacobs. Optical Engineering, Volume 21, Pages 281 Euro 283, Experiments with Retrodirective Arrays, by Stephen F. Jacobs. Scientific American, December 1985, Phase Conjugation, by Vladimir Shkunov and Boris Eldovich. Scientific American, January 1986, Applications of Optical Phase Conjugation, by David M. Pepper. Scientific American, April 1986, The Amateur Scientist, by Jill Walker. Scientific American, October 1990, The Photorefractive Effect, by David M. Pepper, Jack Feinberg, and Nikolai V. Kukhtarev. External links, Apollo 15 Laser Ranging Retroflector Experiment, Manual of Traffic Signs, Retroflective Sheetings Used for Sign Faces, Motorcycle Retroflective Sheeting, Lunar Retroflectors, How Stoof Works Article on Retroflector-Based Invisibility Cloaks, Reflective Traffic Sign Laws.